Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and I am here with a Deadpool 2 movie review for you guys. Now, I know a lot of you were actually asking for Solo, but I ended up seeing this movie first. I will be doing a Solo review this week, though. This coming week, I still have to see the movie, so expect that movie around, um, that movie review to go up on, on Wednesday, probably. Um, it's going to be my next day off from work, so I'm, I'm a I'm probably going to have the review up that day, if not sometime this coming week, later on in the week. So you could all look forward to that, for the ones asking for my solo review. But for now, let's take a look at this film. I am pleased to start off this review by saying that this is a really good sequel. Um, it, it's got a lot of the same energy, a lot of the same sense of humor as the first film. It breaks the fourth wall. It has fun with itself, and that's what I'm really enjoying about this series. I, I'm not going to say what is the better film out of the two, because to tell you the truth, I've only seen Deadpool once the whole way through. I went to go see it in theaters. I reviewed it here on this channel, um, and, and that was about it. Uh, it's not that, you know, like I said, I really enjoyed the first movie, but I didn't really have a desire to go back and see it so soon. It's just not one of those movies like Star Wars where, you know, I, I've got to go see it again. It's, it, you know, as soon as I see it, I've got to get right back to the theater at least within a week to see that, that, that movie again. I just don't have the same, you know, heartfelt feeling towards, uh, like, the uh, towards that film or, or like a lot of these Marvel movies that have come out in recent memory uh, you know it's, it, it, they don't speak to me on the same level like they're good movies but they're movies that really like I don't think too much about from day to day like oh man you know uh, I can't wait to get home from work so I could watch this movie now, I don't have that feeling with about a lot of these recent superhero films um, but this movie, Deadpool 2, is, is is just as good as the first. You know, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I watch the other one again, I will probably have a clear-cut opinion which one I like more. Um, it's probably going to be debated for quite some time uh, among fans who have seen these films before. So, you know, uh, we're probably going to see a lot of reviews. They're probably already out where people are debating, saying this one's not as good or this one is better for these particular reasons. But let's start off this review in an organized fashion. Let's talk about the story. The story starts off with Deadpool's girlfriend dying, getting shot up by sex traffickers. And if you, if you, you know, first of all, you, you should know that there's going to be spoilers in this review because I talk about everything in depth for new viewers on this channel. So stop watching right now. Um, you know, because you already saw I gave you a little spoiler right there. I, you know, that's in the comics, I guess. So I'm not really a big, uh, I haven't read a, co a Deadpool comic since the 90s. So, you know, I'm, I'm, and that's back when Deadpool wasn't even funny before they reinvented the character. So, you know, I don't know if that happened in the comics or not. I'm sure Marvel fans are going to come at me right now. It discredits me because, oh, I, I, I'm not aware of the comic material. So I shouldn't even be able, I'm not an authority on Deadpool. You know, we've had, I've had history on here. To say the least, with Marvel fans, you know, despite the, the shirts and the the spider, you know, if you don't, if if you don't know it page by page, these comics, you know, you're you're not an authority to speak on these things, but but whatever, guys. So, they she gets shot up. Um, Deadpool is now looking for meaning. Uh, he ends up meeting up with Colossus again, and they make him an X-Men in training. He meets up with a, a young, troubled youth, Russell, who is goes by the name of Fire Fist, and Deadpool takes a liking to this kid, wants to help him out, especially when he finds out that Cable is hot on his tail. He's come from the future to try, try to stop this kid from wrecking the whole place. This, this kid becomes like some fucking fiery super villain badass in the future um and it, it's pretty cool when cable shows up i gotta tell you josh brawlin is awesome in, in this role i mean he looks the part uh you know leading i i can't begin to tell you you know if you weren't following the product the production of this film um i did not watch a lot of the trailers um 
you know, so I, I missed when they initially announced that Josh Brolin was going to be Cable, but there were many different picks and theories about who was going to be Cable leading up to this movie. There was, you know, Kevin Nash, Ron Perlman, it was all over the place. People were saying, you know, there's a, people were knocking Josh Brolin uh, as, as, as Cable, saying it wasn't a good choice, that they should have went with somebody else, somebody bigger, somebody burlier, somebody taller. And they even knock on that in the film as well, you know, uh, about his height about him being 5'11". And is he really 5'11"? I, I'm not sure. But, you know, he gives off a taller appearance. Uh, Josh Barlin, you know, is, is not a small guy. But um, really good pick. Plays the tough guy role excellent. They make him look good. They make him look very much like the comic um, Cable. And, you know, I, I think really for the most part, I'd be really surprised if the majority of fans are, you know, not impressed by this performance of Cable. I, I thought it was pretty flawless. Uh, you know, Cable is a, a pretty uh, tight, you know, um, you know, r really serious, tough character. You know, not really known for a lot of personality, but we do see a lot of personality. Him and Deadpool trade barbs back and forth in this film, and it's really entertaining. So basically, you know, we, we find that um, Russell really wants to kill uh, the, um, the this, this one guy that's really harassing mutants, that keeps them in the icebox, who wants to... Um, you know, just experiment on, on, on these mutants and, and torture them. And Deadpool wants to help him out. But, of course, Cable wants to, you know, kill this kid. But Deadpool and him managed to work out a, a little truce um, to try to work together. And if Deadpool could try to change Russell, you know, then uh, Deadpool won't kill him. And, but, of course, you know, the story is there, but it really takes a back seat to all the hijinks and the jokes and... You know, some people might say that this this story it, it it kind of lacks importance. That you know, this Deadpool is taking a liking to this kid, and, and it's really just all about trying to save this one kid. At, at you know, especially when Deadpool is known for killing so many people and like not giving a shit. Uh, but the story, like I said, really takes a back seat. It, it it's not really that important in the grand scheme of this movie. It's not like this. This is so plot heavy. This movie is really all about having fun, but I'm sure a lot of people are going to say this is a weakness of the film. I really don't think that it is. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate here. I could kind of see where, you know, more serious like Avengers, Marvel fans that really want a serious plot, you know, with a, with a lot going on. And there's a lot going on in this film but it never lose sight sight of itself it really does it just it keeps having fun the dialogue is great it's a lot of fun the jokes are flying uh, right and left i mean deadpool's dialogue is great it, uh, to me from what i remember of the first film it's really just as good maybe some of the jokes might have been fresher in the first like i said i really got to go back and watch the first film the first film was really hilarious this film really had me rolling at a lot of moments i mean a lot of the stuff with deadpool and and colossus it's just plain fucking hilarious i i mean a lot you know there's one scene when he's caressing Colossus. And you, if you're watching this out of context, you know, if you're hearing me speak about this out of context, really, it's going to sound really weird. But you, you, if you're familiar with Deadpool and you're familiar with the first movie, of course, you know it is going to be weird because that's what Deadpool is all about. And there are, you know, plenty of bizarre one-liners. There's hilarious, you know, pop culture references, breaking the fourth wall, um... You know, once again, making cracks about the X-Men not being in the movie. And there was this one great shot where he's complaining about, you know, the studio, about Fox not lending more uh, characters to the Deadpool movie. And then we see Beast just closing the door, on, on like, when they're having, like, a meeting. And you could kind of see Cyclops and a few others in there. And they're a bit out of focus. But you, I think they they might be the cast, you know, um, 
for, from days of future past and and apocalypse you know so that that was that was pretty funny to see there's a lot of nice little touches in there a lot of nice little uh you know more than just easter eggs because these are more than easter eggs they're more in your face uh you know and that's kind of the purpose it, there was a lot of fan service here as much as they possibly could give and you know they do talk a lot about things they know when the fans are going to nitpick at certain things like the whole plot line about russell you know pretty much destroying the future deadpool asks why can't he just go back and you know in time and just kill him when he's a baby or you know he says well, why you're at it why don't you just go back in time and kill hitler you know like and, and, and of course there's going to be a lot of people in the audience taking the movie too seriously and probably saying that up to this point like you know why can't he just go back in time and this movie does scream terminator it really does and i mean but you already know that if you watched x-men the animated series or read any of the comics i mean for for me for x-men i read comics as the as a kid in the 90s for the x-men but uh, i mean mostly where i had most of my fun with x-men came from the fox kids um saturday morning cartoon you know that was just excellent so you know there's even one scene where he calls cable john connor and i'm like yeah that's what's so great about this movie it just has fun it's really not afraid to say anything um you know the r rating of course helps Right off the bat, you know, he's making fun of Logan and the comparisons that fans made to Deadpool where they had the idea to make Logan a uh, an R-rated film. And, you know, of course, addressing a lot of fans' concerns about Logan being killed off in the film. Uh, so, you know, th there's a, a lot of the filmmakers and the people at Fox who probably worked on this movie as well. Some of the maybe some of the same writers, I don't know, you know, kind of communicating with the fans of this movie in ways that they, they couldn't be for. So that, that's kind of fun how they have almost like a little bit of a forum going on with the fans. And, you know, it really is. It's entertaining to see that all played out. You know, it really seems it's not like one of these movies like that that's produced by Disney. You know, what not one of these. You know, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe where everything has to be so like uptight all the time and by the numbers. You know, you got to admit, even with Infinity War, it there was a lot of parts. Even though it it, it felt a lot less constrained and a lot more fun and entertaining than Age of Ultron, it felt like you know buttoned up to the collar really still to a point and deadpool basically just rips its shirt off and it's standing there and it's underwear for all to see it's you know like i said it's not scared to get a bit crazy a bit zany to do a joke outside the box it doesn't just have to be so by the numbers and playing itself it, you know playing safe to the point of ridiculous you know and just eye rolling so, you know, there needs to be more movies like this where it, it just has fun with itself. It's just a fun... Okay, so Spider-Man Homecoming was probably more in that vein if we're going to talk about, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe. I wish we could see more of that. And, of course, people say, oh, well, this is Sony. It's, it, I mean, it's it's Fox. It's totally different. Uh, this is this is this is from Fox Studios. It, it's not Marvel Cinematic Universe. So of course you're gonna have two different styles. And like I said, I think I said it for the first film. I prefer this style. I you know like I said when it when it comes to those Avengers movies, they really play things a a bit too safe, too much by the numbers, a bit too kid friendly in many parts and. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's in those films that's even inappropriate for a kid, certain jokes and stuff. So it's like, I don't even understand, you know, either go on one side or the other, really. Because when they told that line, that's just when things get boring. And, and that's why when you have a movie like Deadpool and Deadpool 2 in this case, you know, things are just a lot more entertaining because you, you don't know what's gonna happen there's many unpredictable moments uh for okay so there's a lot of praise going on in this review i really enjoyed it i really was laughing it up juggernaut was a great addition juggernaut is fully cgi i gotta be honest you know i i knew it was juggernaut as soon as they were in the ice box 
and Russell, you know, and talks about befriending the biggest person in the prison, and Deadpool talks about foreshadowing, and, and, and that there's a really large guy being kept in the basement of this facility. You kind of just figure, you, you know, when, when Russell goes and he pushes the food tray underneath the, the prison door, and you hear the loud bangs, you already know it's somebody big. I kind of thought briefly, it's not going to be the blob that's not really, you know, as intimidating enough of a foe. You knew it was going to be Juggernaut. And the last time we saw Juggernaut is in the heavily or o really overly criticized X3, you know, The Last Stand, X-Men 3, the Brett Ratner film that everybody pretends to hate because it's Brett Ratner and, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, comic book film critics, you know, all the pros say that this is the film to hate. You know, so so I, everybody just basically falls in line. So I'm here to say, though, I think that Juggernaut, I liked him a little bit more in, in, in X3, how he looked. Uh, but he's implemented pretty well here. It's just, you know, kind of like in X3, I, I think that Juggernaut is just so awesome. He just, you know, even though he has a nice little fight scene, he just goes away a bit too quickly. I mean... Why is he not like featured prominently? He is such a major villain. Why can't they just make him a centerpiece? Really, Juggernaut is is so awesome. He's this big, tough powerhouse that just cannot be defeated with his helmet on. Um, but it, it was really just cool to be see him added in and with the foreshadowing and everything. I mean, it, it's a nice appearance and everything. You know, going along with Cable. I mean, you couldn't really ask for more. And Russell's a pretty cool character himself, too. You know, when when he's chasing around the warden, the icebox warden, trying to kill him, and, you know, Deadpool is trying to beg him off, you know, not, not to kill the guy, you know, and, and become um, even worse than him. That This, though, leads into a part where I got to say it's one of the most bizarre, misplaced, and mismanaged parts of the film. And, you know, heavy spoilers already, though I really even have to say at this point, is when Deadpool decides that he wants to die. So he puts on the, the collar that he had on when he was in the icebox that takes away his powers and makes him cancerous once again. He does this long, drawn-out speech where it's supposed to be funny with random jokes that were, you know, already, like, done you know, previously in the same film. And he kind of just lies there and fake dies. And this goes on for what feels like forever. It's like five minutes. It's like one of those those moments when you're just sitting there watching the screen and your mind just starts to wander. It's like, you ever see that? Like, you're looking at the screen. You're not even on your phone. You're not multitasking. You're not doing anything else, but it's like you're just watching it, and it just feels like you're watching it, but you just can't really focus on this anymore. This this, this was the only scene really in this movie, because I got, I got to be honest with you. This movie is thoroughly entertaining. There's, I mean, it, it's funny. You, you know, there's, there's so many great moments. There's so much great action. There's so much to, you know, after this movie to talk about with friends and family and discuss your favorite parts of it, but... Uh, at this part of the film, I, I mean, like, I don't know. They might have filmed this scene exactly, like, in chronological order towards the end. But it just, like, goes off the rails, and it's just not funny. It's just kind of like, okay, I really just kind of wanted to fast forward this. I couldn't, like, stand looking at it anymore. It was kind of painful to watch. And, and, and it was really weird because this movie was really good. And then this scene comes along, and it's like the longest five minutes I've ever seen. I mean, it was really painful. It was kind of like the boredom I felt in, in, in like Age of Ultron, you know, like in, in many parts. Like, like this was kind of the same kind of a feeling I had when they were down on the farm with Hawkeye in Age of Ultron. I felt the same way. Like, can we move on already to something eventful? I mean, most of the movie had already, you know, taken place, and they were reaching the conclusion. But, 
But man, I mean, it, this is like where the movie just kind of hits a brick wall, and we all knew he wasn't going to die anyway. And, you know, he puts the collar on, and Colossus could easily crush the collar, but he decides to die. And, you know, I, I don't know. I think it was just a bit funky, this part, really. It was a bit half-baked, and I, I don't know. They should have just written their, themselves out of this one. Like, all these creative ideas in this film, and they couldn't figure out, like, once this idea was presented for this scene, they couldn't figure out an alternative so they could just get out of this because they spent way too much time on it. Uh, and it was just like a really lazy part. It was just like, okay, we, we're going to do this scene. We're too lazy to change it, even though it's not good. Just leave it in there. It's it's just like, okay, I understand this is a pivotal uh, plot point here. He takes the bullet for for Russell. Cable decides that since, you know, Russell says he can't trust Deadpool, Cable's going to shoot him anyway. So, you know, obviously if Colossus just crushed the collar... He would have been able to, you know, get over the cancer again and become Deadpool again. But instead, you know, Cable uses up the last of his fuel to go back in time and give Deadpool the coin that he gave to his girlfriend before he died. And it's just like, this was this was pretty damn extra, to say the least, uh, in more ways than one. I mean, this just didn't need to be in there. It was a boring part. It kind of killed the pacing of this scene it was pretty heart pumping you know are they going to kill russell is he you know is deadpool going to be able to turn him and yeah so anyway it's a minor complaint but it's just like i'm just warning you when you come to this scene it's going to bore you it's going to make your eyes roll and if you're watching it on the dvd or blu-ray you're going to probably fast forward through it because this part is pretty painful it's like something you'd expect out of like a bad movie and they just put it in there. But perhaps I'm going on too much about it. This was a really positive experience. It was a really good movie. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I think the characters were well portrayed. Like I said, you know, maybe you can make the argument that Juggernaut was kind of shoehorned in there. But I thought it was pretty awesome for him to make an appearance. And why he, while he is on screen, he does look pretty damn cool. Even if he is CGI the fuck. And that's what's funny, even what Deadpool says when Colossus and Juggernaut, Juggernaut clash. He even says, oh, big CGI fight coming. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's an entertaining fight. Um, and, and like I said, like much like all the action, uh, you know, the, the pacing is excellent. Besides that one brick wall that they hit uh, with the dying scene, you know, the mock dying scene. I mean, they, they, they really paced the film well. And, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of surprises, a lot of laughs, and overall, I think it's a really good movie. So, I definitely recommend that you guys go see it. I hope you all enjoyed the review. Um, I'll be coming up with a, uh, a, a solo review for you later on in the week. So, guys, you can all look forward to that when it comes out. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Until next time.